Most people in life are looking for how do I make a life worth living and retirement worth having. The challenge that plenty of people and human beings run into is their concept of an issue room. What is your issue is not a question that people typically ask in any job interview. What is the issue that you're passionate about that is supportive of some cause that is needed for you? What I mean is, what are you doing to help someone in a cause? You see, part of life balance is a philanthropic endeavor. But when you start to attack someone's life because you think you know what God wants for their life, you're going to go to hell. The good Lord of above all people knows what he makes. And when he makes it, it's still made, isn't it? So when we have COVID, we have to decide that God made that because he makes all. Which means he made the scientists that created it. He made the scientists release it to teach the world something. Or did the whole government lie to us the whole time through the election to push through other things going on in the world? If we have something in one hand and we're showing to someone, but we're doing something in another hand and we're doing something ill-willed, isn't it best to keep focusing on the thing that everybody's worried about? But here's what I know about monsters in the community. A monster in the community doesn't know where his life and his rights begin and end. A monster in a family says, I'm going to police this, I'm going to fix this, I'm going to do this because I feel like it. And they create an abuse network with other family members, other biological members, other community members, and they lie to themselves in front of the Lord Jesus in heaven about their rights. No one placed Jesus into jail. Bastards of Satan did that. So let's talk about you and your rights. Where do your rights begin and end? Every fucking morning we have to listen to these loud fucking dump trucks because nobody in the world has decided how to make them quieter so they don't abuse our noise ordinances. Yeah, we have little shitbags who come from foreign lands renting cars and souping them up to make them so fucking loud we think they're at the Indy 500 or the Daytona, sorry, Indy, Indy, or the Daytona 400. In life, we have moments of time to speak the truth. And whatever the fuck you're doing that's so selfish that abuses other people's rights, you better think it through. You are not mature enough to have had a child is true. You are not mature enough to have had a wife is true. If you're on a college campus, what are you here to do? You're here to prepare yourself for real life and training. Your family failed to do that if they taught you that you have the right to walk in on anyone's house, anyone's bags, anyone's pockets and do whatever the hell you want to do. If you've been taught that you have the right to take fingertips off, you better fucking believe you're going to end up in jail. If you've been taught that you have the right to do a college prank in your mind that cuts someone's beard off, you better fucking think it again because that is called molestation and mutilation under federal law. And any fucking international college student who is here is regarded as must follow American law. I know kids who came here internationally underneath age 20 and made mistakes. They ended up in real male jail. But let's talk about you. Where do your boundaries for your body and your mind and your heart and soul end? They end with you. And when you walk into someone's life or you walk around the fucking community saying you have the right to know who has COVID and who does not, you're full of shit under medical law. And when you send your little fucking friends to go attack a man's life because of your version of life and your version of the Quran and your version of the Bible, you're full of shit. You have no right to put your personal ideas on someone else's life. I don't give a shit if you're heterosexual. I don't give a shit if you're bisexual. I don't give a shit if you're, you're lesbian or gay. If you're that, that's you. Someone else may be something else. But in America, here's the stupidity of life. God didn't say go into the world and exposing yourself to everyone else. God didn't say go into this life and talk about sexuality as if it doesn't matter at all. To him it matters. What happens between two people in love is privately between two people. But when bitch siblings and bastard strangers start to get involved in someone's sex life and talking about it, it's immoral. Look at your damn books of the world.
This is not rocket science. This is a man who's waking early in the morning, who's pissed off and miffed off at the absolute arrogance of the young people whose parents put them on the campus to fuck people over in life. The little selfish bastard who keeps stealing my property from the black community. I'm not talking about color here. I'm talking about a blackened soul that thinks I'm in charge of you because I feel like it. All I see as an educated businessman displaced by liars of the land is a smart ass little motherfucking shitbag of our community that we don't need here. The Chinese who play these person to person games dehumanize life. The Koreans that use their technologies because they produce the cell phones to shit on people's computers and cell phones need to leave here. Nobody gives you the permission to lord over anyone's life. Nobody gives you the permission to use your fucking dump truck to drive up on someone at night. And nobody gives any fucking white man, black man, colored man, whatever the fuck color you are, the right to walk into someone's little sleeping space and cut off their beard with a knife. But who the fuck you are to God better be visible to you as well. Because you just lied. And when you just lied, you better decide whether or not what you just decided to not disclose actually belongs to you at all. If you have private conditions, if you have medical situations, those are your rights to keep private. But when some shitbag thinks they're going to take your rights and throw them in front of the wall, you better fucking believe God's going to give you COVID. You see, God takes all life. He has reapers in this life. We lose a lot of important people way too young. We lost a brother in my family a long time ago, and allegedly he was a problem child. But openly he still died, and it impacted my bastard older brother. But don't you fucking tell me how I feel about my siblings, and don't you fucking tell me how I feel about my mother, because I don't know you at all. But I damn miss my beloved father and don't you fucking pretend like you're my dad because my dad was the best of them all but don't you fucking believe I didn't miss him as he started to die in his disease but he was paying the cost for his abuse to people in my family and I know this is how Jesus teaches life that while his heart became golden as he was dying with his disease the rest of him couldn't function because he wanted to be powerful over other people and that was wrong but we can't live his whole life again and what he did for most of us in our family was keep us together keep us loving and give us a legacy but I have shitbag siblings who marry dumbass husbands who don't know shit about loving people and I will never tolerate them in my life again because they fucking chose wrong and it ruined life for them and their families it taught them that they can lie, steal, and cheat. So don't you fucking talk to me as if we're friends. And don't you fucking talk to me as if I'm your guy friend or girlfriend. If you don't know how to talk to a man of my age, then you are unlikely to get a job. And if you as a young boy don't know the simple questions of talking to a white man in the Midwest, you are fucking out of line. But don't you roll up on me on your little fucking car thinking you're superior to me because I'm walking with a cart. Because motherfucker, I walked across that state line. I slept in the fucking cornfields. I heard the coyotes howling. And God kept me safe the whole time. But don't you fucking think that I'm lesser than you. My business vehicle was fully paid for until a shitbag like you took it from me. So don't you think you're superior to me, you little motherfuck, and don't you think your little $40,000 job that you're going to get when you leave here is going to provide for your whole fucking life. What provides for your life is learning to serve people. And I'm pretty harsh about this because I am so missing my students is true. My beautiful students in my language program knew what to do in life. Their parents were good, they were kind, but I screened for those people. We had loving relationships and appropriate parent-teacher concepts, and we had super students in our program. Absolutely phenomenal children, and the ones who couldn't make it were let go and released because their bastard families didn't do things well. I don't know. I don't remember every situation is probably true, but some of it is confidential and not a part of you. 
when a human being creates a life, they have to decide how they're going to use their time. And if you don't want to work 40 to 60 hours a week, then you've got to learn how to be an entrepreneur and how to serve people. And you've got to learn how to conduct your life in the hours of the day, the hours of the week that you want to be in the business community. And once you figure that out, then you're good and golden. But if you're going to build a restaurant, be prepared for 70, 80 hour weeks. And if you're going to build a food truck, be prepared for figuring out what festivals you're going to go to. But I can keep talking about the quality of life, but as a young adult, a young professional, a college student on campus, you better fucking believe I'm going to teach you the rules of life. Do not try to feed me as if I'm your fucking dog. Stop your little Catholic bastard games of walking up to me and try to feed me something that you allegedly chose. I have no fucking clue if you took that from the trash. I have no fucking clue if you stole that from one of those those pick-me-up bins. I have no idea. But if you want to truly help me, you walk up to me and ask me about my ministry, you ask me about my life, you create a real relationship. Because a real relationship is what helps people thrive. But you as a young person cannot conduct your life without knowing how to talk to people of my age that are not a part of your original biological family. And I can school you in every fucking question they'll probably ask you in your job hunt. But if you've picked a program that doesn't actually produce a job because you didn't think it through to the end of your situation in college, that's on you. Most people of my generation are not working in their college degree. Not because they couldn't, but because life happens to them. And we are not three. So when you play the I wanna and I'm gonna do it because I wanna do it, Go the fact fuck back home to your country. We don't need any more childish little bastard Arabs from any Middle Eastern country that don't know where the fuck their rights begin and end. You brought alcohol to our country. You brought pot to this street. Who the fuck do you think you are at all? We don't need more distractions from real life. We need people who take action and know what real life is about.